Okay, I just spent the better part of the day learning how to uh, make micro blades, and uh, I've come up with a way to could do it to do it consistently. Although I've got to admit that if um, if you already know how to flint nap, this sort of thing is like the biggest waste of time in the world. <laughs> in my opinion, this has got to be one of those specialized skills that. Uh, takes a certain kind of person to do but anyway I took these off of this core here and uh, just developing a core is a task in itself there has to be certain things that are just just right about the piece of stone you're working with um, I found out if you're using a hammer stone to do these bladelets it's best to uh, hammer through the cortex and not hammer directly onto the, the good quality flint. Uh, the cortex absorbs some of that energy and the bulb of percussion uh, stops before it gets to the good flint here. That's one thing. The other thing is it's got to be high grade chert or flint to produce these bladelets. Now it takes quite a bit of time to get used to it and uh, one reason why I went and uh, went through all this trouble was because a friend of mine asked me to do a video on a Neolithic style of arrowhead that was made from blades like this. And uh, the Neolithic style of arrowhead, or I guess it was a Mesolithic arrowhead from England, was made on a flake similar to this. or it, Let's say that it, it was a flake and it looked like an arrowhead and it was a flake that looked like this except it had a pointy end on this side. The uh, flake initiated here and it feathered out. The flake that, uh, that he showed me was pointed on this end and it looked just like an arrowhead. Now I can make this look just like an arrowhead with a little bit of work minimal amount of work and uh, it's pretty straightforward the problem is with these type of uh, flakes is to make these on a consistent basis requires both a lot of skill and a lot of material because you'll go through quite a bit of material before you can get a good amount of flakes that look just like this or flakes that uh, can be made into arrowheads with very little modification. And uh, let me see if I can make some on film here. I'm going to take this core that I've been using. I've had good luck on this side here. So let's try to, I'm going to try to take some bladelets off. I find that a uh, a long hammer stone like this works best. And the strikes have to be very accurate. This angle has to be very consistent here. This is just the natural surface of the stone. Now this one you can almost haft it like it, like it is right here. You would just need to sharpen the tip and uh, flatten out the base and you can haft it onto a spear or an arrow. The uh, bulb of percussion is here. Fanned out very nicely. It's got quite a bit of a wave in it. It's mainly because it's the hammer stone doing the work. And all I would need to do is take off these thick parts. Let's see, let's try another one. The edge has to be carefully prepared. Again, you could half that just like that. 
with a little bit of sharpening to the tip, and that wouldn't be a usable arrowhead. Just minimal, minimal amount of uh, retouching to turn this into a usable arrowhead. That's about it. It's usable just like that. Now to get to that point, I spent, like I said, the better part of today, which was about six hours of work and uh, two naps. <laughs> it got so frustrating at, uh, at certain points that I just had to go in and take a nap for, you know, 30 minutes or an hour or so just to get my mind back to normal. The most frustrating part is figuring out the combination of the hammerstone and the type of core that work the best together. Now of course you have to follow a ridge. So just finding a good ridge to follow is sometimes difficult. And there's step fractures that that occur that you've got to take a large flake to get rid of those first before you could take one of those smaller thinner flakes. Again, all I would need to do is take off some of this mass down here and put a point on it. And this edge is extremely sharp, this edge is extremely sharp. And I could use this as an arrowhead with very little work. Now the reason why I mentioned earlier that I think it's a big waste of time is because you've got to have a lot of material or have access to a lot of material to find cores that will work for you. Not only do they have to be good quality all the way through, but you've got to have a good surface for uh, a good surface for the platforms. And in this case, I need the platform to be a little softer than the main stone because I'm using a hard hammer stone. Now, I've tried using antler, but antler the impact area on antler is very large com in comparison to the impact area from hammerstone. So I end up with very wide, flat flakes. I don't end up with narrow bladelets like this. A hammerstone will do this. Now I, I suppose a sharp antler uh, indirect percussion tool may be able to do the same thing. I just haven't tried that method. But uh, I suppose an indirect percussion tool could do the same thing. But it would wear out the tool pretty quick. This is raw stone. So let's just uh, see how long it takes me to rough this out and make it into an arrowhead. I'm just using two hammer stones. One is an anvil, one is a hammer. skills involved in this particular type of arrowhead are very different than the uh, napping skills required for bifaces. I don't want to say it's easier, but it, it, uh, it's less time consuming once you get the hang of making the cores, or if you have access to the material that you need uh, to obtain the cores, it does save a little bit of time, I can see, in the long run. But that's all it would take. Just a little bit of a constriction on the base, that could be a good, that lateral dark point. Very, very sharp edges. Could even be a small knife. Let's see if I can take off one of those very small bladelets like this here. Now I need to follow a, a good ridge. This might work here. I'm kind of hitting into the stone, but it's in it's in a circular 
type of um, path or trajectory. I'm not hitting straight in like this. I'm hitting inward but also following through. Right now I'm hitting too close to the edge, that's why I'm not removing a flake. I'm just removing a little bit off the edge. I need to try to hit further inward. That wasn't too bad. That would make a nice bladelet uh, for a knife. It doesn't take much work to uh, make that usable. And that would just be inserted into the edge of a piece of wood. And that blade is very sharp. So you could insert either side into a piece of wood and that would be a quick knife. A little bit of pine pitch glue, a little groove in the wood and just stick that in there. Wait for it to harden and you have a knife in less than five minutes. So once you get the technique down, it's 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 not bad, but it would require uh, it would require skills that are totally different from regular napping, and I, I think it would benefit you more if you had regular biface napping skills. Okay. That wasn't very long. Now this doesn't translate at all into uh, skills you would need to biface something. This is just purely core and blade uh, development. It has not, has not really anything to do with uh, bifacial flint napping. It's a totally different skill. Okay, so I could make this into an arrowhead quickly. I could either make it into a what they call a transverse arrowhead, where the this large size, this large side would be the front of the arrow point. Um, kind of like this flake here. This could be mounted in a shaft with this pointed part in the wood and this chisel-like edge as the point. This is called a transverse oblique style arrowhead, which is found in uh, ancient Europe. Or you could haft it like this, and it would just be a, uh, a normal leaf shape type arrowhead. This would require just a minimum of work to make it into a transverse arrowhead. Just a little bit of sharpening on that, take off this. Uh, point there, just rubbing it against a, a rock. I just rubbed this against a rock and it took that point off. And I could haft it just like that. With a little bit of sharpening on this side, and this, it's a, it would be a transverse arrowhead. shaped it by rubbing it the sides on a rock. No flint napping at all. None of the traditional bifacial flint napping involved. The only thing you would do is take your pressure flaker and just chip a little bit off of that to make it sharper. It's pretty sharp right now so you could use it just like that. Let's see if I can make a small one, small thin bladelet. See that's that's not good for future. I would have to come back here and take that off or try to.
might be able to get let's see still not able to get a small one probably I'll try right here there I got a small one there but it's not quite what I was looking for too big it's too big uh, for the micro blade but it's good for an arrowhead for sure that's not too bad Indirect percussion might actually work better. Let's see if I can do that. <clears throat> the trick is finding the blade after I remove it. <laughs> my finger there so I'm going to try to catch it when it comes off. That wasn't too bad. It's a nice little bladelet. So to develop a long skinny one to uh, when I was doing these, this uh, edge was a lot longer, so that might be it. Uh, you may, I might need to get, uh, develop another core because this might be expended pretty much for what I want. Let's just try again here. There's not enough power in these uh, strikes to go all the way through, so I'm getting some stepping. Let's see if I can develop a good area. That one might have been a good flick. If I can find it. Okay, here it is. This is actually too thick, but the next one I remove might work well. up so did that one they stopped short
So the main problem I'm encountering is the inability of the flake to travel all the way down. It's probably because I'm, I'm not con, convex enough, but if I'm too convex, the flake will be uh, really curved. I don't want a curved flake. I want a flat one like this. This one's pretty good. back to the hammer stone for a minute. Sorry about that. So preparation of the platform is crucial. And it, you have to strike with, uh, with, uh, with accuracy and consistency. That's a pretty good uh, flake for an arrowhead. Flat, not curved. It's a little too thick. So I've been trying for about, I don't know, three, three or four minutes trying to get a small micro blade off of this. And it would, you would think it'd be easy because a microblade doesn't remove much material. But hitting close to the edge and trying to peel off a long flake at the same time is not easy. And uh, my regular flint napping skills are not really helping me in doing this. So I normally don't want to take off really long thin flakes when I'm creating a biface. I mean I do want to create long thin flakes but not narrow long thin flakes. Not usually. See, when I go too far inward, and that's really not that far inward. I'm going to go inward further than um, than I would normally. It just takes off a flake that's too big. And there's very little difference in where you strike. Yeah, just crushing. So like I said, this takes a lot of time. It's a very time consuming process to learn. And it's really completely different from regular flint napping. From doing a biface. So I'm repeating myself now, so I think I'm gonna cut it short here. I think you get the idea. Bladelets are a totally different technology and uh, in my opinion it's not as useful as uh, the skill of creating bifaces.
the results on this are very unpredictable. That's not bad. But the material I had to waste to get to this flake was considerable, I think. And your point of impact has to be very, very precise. And I tried the indirect percussion, but I was getting breakage. So it needs to be supported on a pad like this and then hit in exact, exactly the right spot to remove a long, flat, narrow flake. That requires minimum alteration and to make it into an arrowhead. Okay, that's it.